we're going to talk about copper cable first. And I have some copper cable here. And we're going to be working with some copper cable later. Make sure I got all my stuff out. It's nice that he didn't change from the camera. You could see the back of my head as I was hunting through my little bag there, huh? All right, the guys here can see it all. All right, here is what's called unshielded twisted pair, okay? This is just the normal, we call it UTP, okay? Unshielded twisted pair is just the normal networking cable you use to connect to the back of your computer, all right? So here's a jack, an outlet, and I got a connector on the end of this, and I just plug it in. There'll be one on the back of your computer too. Did you guys see that little ping? You probably, well, you guys in the room can hear it. Okay, so there's the outlet, there's the cable. Inside the cable, there are these little tiny wires that are twisted together, and there's eight of them, okay? They're twisted in pairs. And you're gonna have to, can you zoom down real good? Let's just zoom down, there we go, way down. Oh, that's great. Now you guys get to see my hand. You're like, what? That hand is not good for high def TV. I need some makeup on. All right, so there's eight wires in here and they're twisted together in pairs. So I got a green and then green one is twisted with this white one, blue one. This one is orange and you can't tell the difference between the orange and the brown and you can hardly tell looking at it right here, but they're different colors, okay? So they're twisted pairs, that's what the twisted means, and there's no shield over them, okay? There is a kind of wire that has a shield over the whole set, but these don't have it. I'm gonna show you a shield now, which is from a coaxial cable. You all are used to this, right? You still have these on the back of your TV sometimes. Those are old, aren't they? Even your, um, like the cable, your component cable also is shielded like this. There's a center conductor, and then this outside is a shield. If you actually take the wire apart, it looks like this, okay? So there's that center conductor. This sort of braiding here is mostly here to keep it, uh, keep it strong. But the shield is actually this aluminum, there's like an aluminum thing around the top, okay? So that is a shielded cable, and it's coaxial, say? So we are not using a shield. Okay, let me scoot this down until I can see it. Don't zoom out though, leave it there. All right, there's different categories of unshielded twisted pair. So a CAT3 is really the oldest type, okay? CAT3 is thin, so it's thin copper, and it is relatively few twists. Okay, so thin copper with few twists, and I have one right here, because I am just that old, or I don't know where I found this, but it just showed up. So here is a category three cable, and if you look at it next to this category five cable, you can see that it's just not as bumpy, and you can't even zoom in that much. See, if you were in front of me, I'm just gonna pass these out and you guys can look at them. The category three cable is not twisted as much together, and it's a thinner cable. That saves money in making it. This whole thing is, you know, probably costs, well, it costs a lot less. So twisted a lot, thicker cables, not as twisted, thinner cables. So I'm gonna pass all this around. You guys need to reach up and grab this. Get your homework too. All right, so I'll write down the cat five. So there's cat five and I'll just put CAT5E. CAT5E basically is the same. So it's thicker and there are more twists. Right? What do we got here? Oh, we've been going at this a little while. Now I'll just to show one more example. This is the back of that outlet. You can see inside 
There's little leads in there. Those look great. These are nice TVs, huh? So there's little leads in there. And if I have my plug, I don't have my plug anymore. There's a plug right here. Luckily, I have a thousand of these. So if I have my plug, it has these gold things. And the gold things are going to hit the lead when I plug it in. You guys see that? There's little uh, slots on the back of the wire or on the back of this outlet. You can see those. And in here, I can rest. Okay. Oh, there's one. I can rest the wires in. And as they go in the notch, they, I don't know, it just holds them in. Well, I do know. It holds them in and it makes a nice connection. Okay. So this outlet, there's wires connected to the back and they go back inside the walls to the Merry Christmas land. Okay. Again, Cat5 wire, twist it inside. Boom, there we go. All right, so that's copper cable. Well, sort of. Um, yeah, now you can go ahead and zoom it out. You guys remember when you had your video camera? Mom took pictures of your know, birthday. And there's always that sound of the motor. It's quiet in here. All right, so I got my cables here. Now in these cables, we have a circuit. I lost track of one of my cables. So a circuit is going to carry the signal. Inside here, I might have a white and orange cable. I guess I could use different colors. And then I have an orange cable. All right. Now, in imaginary land, I'm just going to pretend this is a battery. So I got a battery over here. Because you all have a battery inside your computer, right? Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, it uses power from the wire, but from the wall, that's okay. So I'm going to connect this to the bottom and this one to the top. And over here we have a sensor that has a voltmeter on it. And it's going to sense. That's an awesome voltmeter, isn't it? It looks like my floppy disk. Okay. It's all right. <coughs> and it's going to sense how much electricity is going through the cable. Are we good with this? So it's a complete circuit. And we know things here. We remember this from fifth grade. There's a plus here and a minus here. Which direction do the electrons flow? You guys remember that? Come on, there's electrolyte in the battery. The ionized stuff goes from the negative. It goes up here, OK? So the electrons go this way, and then they come down back that way, OK? So this is a circuit, right? If we had a light over here, there'd be a lovely light. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, so we light up our light and everything is working wonderfully. So I've got my one cable going one way and the other one's going the other. All right, and I have to do this right handed, sorry. So we're going to do the bottom wire. So the electrons go down here and they come back here. Now, when electrons go down, it's the right hand rule. So the thumb is the direction of flow. And the fingers are the direction of the magnetic field. You guys know this creates a magnet? You guys know this, right? Because if you wrap the wire around a nail, then it makes the nail into a magnet. Right? You guys remember that, right? So there's a electrical field that's going that way here. And then if I go here, it's going this way. So they're actually like, they're both, they're going opposite ways, but it kind of reinforces each other when they're like this. You guys see that? It's kind of fun, right? All right, we're also used to things like, and we'll pretend this is our nail. When I want to change a voltage, I can put a circuit over here and I wrap some wires around my nail. So I have a wire out here, wire out here. If I wrap other wires around the nail too, and wire out here, wire out here, if I put voltage in over here, then the voltage will come out over here. That's how a transformer works. Are we used to that? So I put some voltage in here, and 
I'm sure you know this. If, for example, I have 12 volts coming through here and there are 12 twists on the wires, if I have half as many twists on the other side, I would get 6 volts coming, it, uh, coming out. Okay? So if there's 12 volts, 100 twists, and then 50 twists on this side, it comes out half as many volts. Come on, this is awesome stuff. You didn't think you'd be hearing about this in telecom. All right, so here's our problem. What did I have? There's my circuit running my cable. And there's an electronic field, right? And you guys just saw those cables right here. And I use two of these. Which ones do I use? I use, oh, I don't remember which ones. It's in my other notes of Ethernet, sorry. I use the green pair and the orange pair. One pair to send, oops, sorry. So <laughs> one pair sends, let's say it's the green pair for now, and the orange pair to receive, okay? And that's two different signals, right? One signal, one circuit is used to send, and the other signal or the other circuit is used to receive. So if we ma put that one down, so there's my orange wire, and here's my green one, right? Now where is my green wire relative to my orange wire? Is it this far away? If it's that far away, you guys remember my magnets, right? The magnetic fields aren't going to interfere with each other, right? If they're right next to each other, then the magnetic field going down the orange wire is going to be right next to this wire. And just like our transformer, what's going to happen to this green wire if the orange wire is right next to it? Magnetic field here goes into this copper and starts freeing up electrons. And those electrons start flowing too. Now, when I was a kid, it doesn't really happen anymore because you guys don't have those old school phones. You pick up the phone sometimes. Now I'm not on camera, so I'll draw the picture. So here I am, and I pick up the phone, and I hear like, blah, blah, blah. I have not even dialed the phone, okay? Why am I hearing blah, blah, blah on the phone? It sounds like my neighbor. It's because, you guys remember, the wire goes through here. It goes on to the, I'll put it on the poles here. It goes on the poles out here. You guys remember it goes into that big green box I told you about? And then coming out of here, where is everybody's wires? Right next to each other. So the wires are next to each other at a reasonable amount of power you could hear other people's conversations. They called that crosstalk. Isn't that awesome? So it's like a really old school word for something that affects us today. So we have a big problem, where's my cable again, with crosstalk. So the signal going over my orange pair of wires is going to create a phantom quieter signal in my green pair of wires. So this is called crosstalk interference. And this is the huge, huge problem. So this is signals from adjoining uh, pairs of wire. We'll just put bleed over. Okay? So we hear these signals in our unshielded twisted pair that are going to bleed over to each other. Now, how do we fight it? The main way we fight it, oddly enough, is twisting the wires together. That's why they're twisted. So I'll put here, twisting helps. And what we do is we, remember I talked about right hand rule, right? And then this one's up here is going this way. 
And since they kind of make a swirly swirly in the middle, they're both going <laughs> toward the middle, it reinforces each other. If I turn the wires across each other, they stop reinforcing. Okay? And if I actually kind of, well, if I twist them together, the more I twist them together, you want them to be like that if you can. But the more, if they're just a little twisted, it helps a bit. The more tighter I twist it, the more I can get those two, you know, the signal going down one side to cancel. I couldn't get it going backwards, sorry. Where am I at? Oh, that's my top wire. So the signal comes down here, and then it comes back the other way. And what I want is the magnetic fields to cancel each other out. All right? Twisting helps. We'll just put cancel out the bleed. Or it just helps anyway. And the more you twist, the more it helps. So if I got a Cat5 wire here, with all those twists in it versus a cat three wire here, I know that the cat three wire is going to have much more crosstalk interference. And where am I at? This one. So if I look back at my little noise thing. So the, that means that category three had a higher noise floor. And so what they ended up doing is putting in more electricity. Anyway, it made it really complicated. But you end up getting a lower bit rate. So what we do to fight interference is usually make our bits bigger. This really means longer, I guess. Longer, okay? So if we look at this other diagram. Yeah. Why is it cost more um, Because it shortens the wire. So like if I take this and as I twist it together, it's gonna actually make the wire, I use up more wire. So that's why. So the same thing, just with more twists. Um, yes. If you just did more twists, it's better. So the question is, yeah. I mean, it's not a cat three and cat five. They're not. It's a little bit thicker of a cable. A thicker cable conducts electricity a little bit better than a thinner one, and then the more twists reduces the crosstalk. So I can put more strong, like a stronger electrical power into this one and not have it bleed all over the place. Right. Is there, a cat six out now? there is a cat six out and what they did there it's either cat six or cat seven. I think it's cat six though. Is they actually put a shield over each twisted pair. And people don't like that because it makes it harder to work with. When you guys make your connectors, it's hard enough to deal with these. But we'll we'll get into all that. Well there's some stuff right now I'm gonna talk about. So we reduce it by twisting the wires together. Okay. Oh, and making the bits longer. That was what I was going to show you. This is my longer bit thing. So you think about it here. If I make a longer zero, then those sort of random that noise, it just makes it easier to pick out the zero, you know, over here. But the longer this is in a zero place. That's a longer clock cycle, right? And I got a fewer clock cycles per second, and then it goes all the way through. So I don't get as high of a bit rate. So with a Cat3, the Cat3 cable, the maximum speed was uh, 10 million bits per second. So 10 megabits per second. Cat5, just regular Cat5 will go to a gigabit per second. Cat5e is iffy on 10 gig. You can go a short distance and get 10 gig out of it. And then cat six, I don't know. Most people are just sticking with cat five for now. Oh, I have the other side of this one.